So, so now what you'll do is you'll just cut it from here and then there and then remove this plug, this little spot weld here. Uh, yep, I'll cut these. I'll cut that spot weld, this cap will come off. Then I will go through and I will we'll remove the material because now I can't get a chisel in there. So I would create a bunch of damage trying to just get that panel separated. So I remove the thick off of it. Then I hammer that flat. Now I've got a straight edge that I can go and actually separate that panel. When you're using an air saw, do not bury it into the metal. You'll cut what's behind it. <laughs> so you want to glide it over the surface, start on a corner. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see how deep that inner structure is inside of there. I have a hole cut. Stick that blade in there. Now I know there's nothing behind there for me to hit. So I can go ahead and roll my saw over. Now that I get to here, I know this is thinner. So when I go to stick my blade in there, it won't go all the way. I know that, that right. Up. Right, I know right behind that is the reinforcing panel. So now I don't want to get all crazy with it, I just want to go nice and easy. So before I know that, I want to make sure that I'm being real gentle with the saw. Starting on a corner. So that inner structure is like right there. Is right there. That's why we're always really careful about what we're doing. If you get in a situation where your inner structure is close, you don't have to use the saw like this. You can literally flip it over. So when we do the final cut, we will use the cutoff wheel because we can just be smooth as butter with it and we can just kind of glide it over it. Mm -hmm. When we get into the shallow areas, that saw blade is much thinner, obviously. So we're going to take this big blade off, put the thin blade on it. That way we can get in between those panels and get them cut. If I did this with my sawzall, I'd have fucked it up by now, for sure. <laughs> I gotta get pneumatic tools. I really have to get pneumatic tools. If you wanna send me pneumatic tools, please hit me up. Email is in the description. I'll tell how good your tools are. Uh, every car I work on um, draws blood. Um, I donate uh, almost daily. Yeah, I appreciate that one. <laughs> <laughs> I give them my love and they take my blood. It's kind of like you have to. Yeah. Man, imagine how many cars out there have my blood in it. Another one of my favorite tools is this belt grinder. When it comes to getting into a tight spot, grinding through a weld, especially when you wind up in a situation like this here, uh, where we're not reusing this outer panel, so it doesn't matter how much damage we cause to it, as long as we don't grind too deep. The trick to these is don't let them sit still. Keep them moving and go up and down. <laughs> And you can actually, if you can't afford an expensive spot weld drill, you can, especially for doing all of these welds, um, you can just use a belt grinder. It's just as a... This is a couple hundred bucks versus, you know, almost a thousand dollars. See, he was talking about earlier about how the heat, you see how the heat immediately like warped this thing and popped it out? Like it was instant, so. Oh. I don't know if I'm supposed to be doing this, but it's what I'm doing. <laughs> Is now I can take this. This is like a dangerous fucking game. 
of not getting cut. You know that? Yeah. Yeah, this ribbon right here, when it winds up on the floor, that is almost razor sharp. If you kick it, if you leave it on the floor and you kick it, it can literally sever your Achilles tendon. Oh. Usually we're some safety third kind of people, but this is definitely a safety first operation, yeah. for sure. Hey, there it is. I just saw the whole panel decide to move. That's how you know you got our welds broke free. We're hanging up on Damn. Get our gloves. You see that we've got all the all the spot welds cut, including the one right here. Because of my experience, I know that GM also glues this striker plate behind. If you just keep on ripping and pulling on it, you'll bend that striker plate. At about 200 degrees Fahrenheit, that glue will let go. So you can either use a little map gas torch, or if you have a heat gun, um, you can use a heat gun. A uh, heat gun will get up to almost 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit uh, if, if you've got a good one. I'm gonna heat this up, and then it's gonna pop loose and this panel will fall off. I would have probably used the torch. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the new panel, it doesn't come with it. So you, gotta, you can't fuck up the striker plate. You have to transfer the striker plate. Fine. See? See? It's way better than if Dan just tore this thing up in his garage. <laughs> if we were working with aluminum, we would be using a thermal gun so we can keep an eye on our temperature because we don't want to get the, the aluminum too hot. Uh, being this is steel, it takes longer to heat up. We can basically kind of pour the heat on it. Just enough so it lets that glue to release. Alright, so we're loose, we're looking at it. Where are we hanging up here? GM using that foam. And there's our outer panel. All right, so now that we've made it look real ugly across the back of it, now you can see that middle layer, cab corner, goes in between there, and we've gotta be able to weld these panels through these panels to the new panel. Now there is one more step in all of this. We've got it. Now we've gotta clean all of this metal, all of the seams. We've actually gotta get behind here. So now, and this is a little scary, we'll grab this actually fold all this over just a little bit so we can get a grinder in between there I'll use a Merca disc it's a hardback disc for getting in between that panel it just works a lot better when you use like the 3m Rolock discs because they're soft-sided they'll flex so when you're trying to get in there and do detail work it's in between sandwich panels it's always better to use a hardback disc. Okay. Yeah. yeah, hard back disc. Say that five times fast. Let's see if you screw it up. Hard back <laughs> disc. Hard back 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 disc. Yeah, it just got weirder and weirder. <laughs> Okay, the next step after you clean all the metal uh -huh. is I have what's called weld through primer. And they offer what's called a zinc rich weld through primer or a copper rich weld through primer. Earlier we were talking about different metals and what sticks to what. Yeah. Everything I know is that steel doesn't stick to copper. So I personally don't like the copper rich enriched weld through primer. The zinc works better. The zinc works better. I had always wondered how they keep it from once they start welding it. That's 
That's freaking me. I have learned so much shit today. Some of it, like, on a on a grand scale should be considered like, oh yeah, basic knowledge. Like, of course, they have well through primer. But I've never done a build like this. I've never had to do something like this. So I've never even considered like how you'd even do that. Well through primer. Good stuff. The trick to this, a very thin coat. If not, it will screw you up your weld. All right, so uh, it's pretty simple. We know where we cut the truck already. Uh, we need to leave enough room to make sleeves out of. So I know that the truck is cut about here, about this far down. It's about four and a half inches from this. Use that for a rough cut line. Let me get you a nice clean line. No, that's pretty Well, you know there. what I mean, like, <laughs> versus like if you just do by eye. All right, so we're using the, the piece that we cut off of the truck and we're looking at, we've got two holes and two holes. Our rough cut on the truck is about here. We need to leave enough room for a sleeve, which is gonna be four inches. So we're gonna come up here, slam another piece of tape on it. And that's where we're gonna cut it at. Take that big beautiful piece, half a side of a truck, or a whole side of a truck, and that's what we're left with. Yeah, and you still gotta pay for the whole side of the truck too, by the way. That looks really good. What to do, because if I put a pair of vice grips in the door, yeah, you won't be able to close it. I won't be able to close the door. So these pinch weld clamps brain, man. Brain allow me to take the new panel and fit it. And look at that gap. He's beautiful. He's cheating. He he's really, good. yeah, he is cheating because if you were really good, you wouldn't even need to fit it. You just, <laughs> you just, you just hang it, let it go. You just throw that <laughs> shit no, honestly, like, like, personally, like, when I do something like it, I just go like this, and then I will it done. And you're like, that's what, <laughs> that's what God wants. <laughs> it's, it's like, probably exactly what I would do. That's exactly what most just, people, no, honestly. Put it up and be like, honest, oh, honest, fuck, I didn't even think about hanging it. <laughs> um, we got a good gap. That's the first thing. Our first pre-fit, we, we stick it up there. We check to see where our seams land and make sure that we're nice in all of our radiuses. And that tells us that our inner structure and our outer panel are in alignment at the pinch welds. Yeah. And just because they're in alignment there doesn't mean you got a good gap because if the inner structure is moved, uh, and you line it up on the pinch welds, you close the door. And all of a sudden it don't fit. And all of a sudden you don't have a gap. So this time we put our outer panel on, lined it up. Man, that's perfect. And we got good gaps, equal and even, all the way around. Like it looks better than the other side, I think. Uh, without a doubt. By like a good bit. So. So we can run this. So we're pretty good there. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna outline off where the panel, where this inner structure meets. So when I pull this panel back off, it'll show me where the welding tabs are. Oh, that's fucking smart. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't drill a hole through the panel <laughs> into an open spot. Because <laughs> there's a view of them in here. Nope. We're gonna come through here, we're gonna flatten this pinch weld back out and then we're gonna mark where each one of these spot welds go. So that when we punch our holes, we know exactly where we need to punch our holes so we can replace the existing original spot welds. Man, he's really good at explaining this. Even I understand it. I also am going to show you how to cheat real quick because I'm pretty good at this. I like cheating. Funny thing is, is your fingers always know where they're at, right? Yeah. So you can reach in here and your fingers always know where they're at. So that hole right there, we don't want to drill through because there's no nothing behind it. We need to put a hole right there so we can... So we can Go get through. penetration yeah. into that 
that single tab that was behind there. Yeah, is that, that need, one little dink. Yep, you notice there's not a hole out here, but there is because they're from the factory, they weld the cab panel on last. This is the, the piece that's up furthest to the outside. Yeah. So they actually weld this unicide onto the inner structure. And then, and the, then cab. the cab. So there's actually hidden welds that you don't see that we hit, we need to go back and Just drill a hole. Yep. So that we can replace every one of those factory welds. So. Like where he was, he's talking about how your fingers always know where each other are at. I'm like, does it? <gasps> you just kind of go wherever you want and you just know. They just know where they're at. You don't have to look at it. You're like, boop. <laughs> Fucking cool. So I'm over here experimenting, like. <laughs> Fucking right on, right on cue, look at that. They just knew where they were. Well, that's messed up, but. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna mark on this panel, on the new panel, everywhere that a spot weld was from the factory because we're gonna replace all those spot welds. <laughs> <laughs> Fire Marshal Bill. <laughs> it's Fire Marshal Bill here. Holy shit. We just, we just put a little gasoline in here and uh, uh, throw a max. It welds itself all back together when you get the metal hot enough. I love, I love welding in the woods. There are tons of flammable leaves. I always stand in the middle of a pile of leaves when I weld. Usually soaked in gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> On a side note, it's good to know, it's good to see that these seats have held up so well through all the abuse. The custom seats. Uh, we want to drill through all the way through this one, all the way through this one. That way we can get good penetration on the inner to the, layers. To the, to the third and fourth layer technically. Absolutely. See, this is the part that I would have trouble with, is fitting it over and over again. And being like, well, I need to pull it out again. It would kill me, man. It would kill me. I suck so bad at that. By the way, everybody, my mommy watches my videos sometimes, and she does, she has to watch them on mute because I cuss in my videos. So I want you and you, Ham, to be like on me about cussing, because I'm trying. I've done it so long that it's just embedded in my speech patterns. It's not because I want to do it or I think it's fun. It's just another word for um, you know? I'm like, fucking uh, stuff like that. So get on me about cussing, guys, in the comments. People are going to be like, don't want you to censor yourself. It's not about that. It's just, I'm just tired of cussing. It's not good words. And I'm not saying that because I want to have more family friendly and better ad revenue because they'll never, they'll never put me on that list. But <laughs> I just want to be a little bit better. Truck's so tall, I gotta have a ladder. But I went and I looked at my rough cut on the inside. So I just took a roll of tape, went above that about an inch. Same thing on this side. Run me a piece of tape across there and that will give me a better guide. Now, I'll cut this. This piece of material is what I'll use for my sleeve. That, that's why when we rough cut the new panel, it's so important to leave enough excess on both sides to make your sleeves out of. Hello? All right. Oh, I'm now sorry, you got the wrong number. Everywhere Spot World goes. So someone a long ass time ago signed my phone number up under a Richard Casanova, which is like the fakest fucking name in the world. Like that has to be the fakest name. So around the clock, I get phone calls for Rich Casanova. Hi, is Richard Casanova there? No, he's not. It's wrong number. Death XL six millimeter hole punch. Simple. Wow, that works. I'll hold it back for you. Do it on the right on the X. Uh, yeah, put it right on the X. Do that. Yep, and then don't pinch your finger in between there. Okay. Wow. Yeah, way easy. Man, it just punches holes out of steel like nothing. I mean, this has got like 16 gauge, yeah. something like that. Super thin. Am I doing all right? Oh yeah, you're doing great. Stop you if you weren't. <laughs> Try to keep it an equal distance away from the edge. 
Um, that way when we weld it together, you don't burn through the outside edge of the panel. Okay. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to keep it in the middle. And then okay. our green marks just mark where the original spot welds were. See, I was trying to get it right on the X's. That's well, what I was trying to do. My X's are the center of the holes in the truck. Okay, so just I did a good job there. Absolutely. So now once we get down here, we're not punching through. We don't have to weld through multiple layers. Now we're just putting the spot welds or plug welds. Okay, so just try to keep these equal distance from the edge. Yep. Does that look all right? Yep. The, um, the high strength steel behind it? Yeah. It will, actually, when we weld these up, instead of just welding the outer panel to the outer panel, we're, we actually have the ability now to weld all the way through. Yeah, these ones look really good. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. Is it like measure, measure twice, cut once is the, yeah. the phrase? Mark your holes once and don't drill through them. Mark your holes 15 times and don't drill through them. Like two One hole we can't forget to. Oh, those were good ones too. People hate that shit. We'll cut it. We'll put it back on one more time. Make sure our root gap is correct. We'll make our sleeves. Grind and clean inside and out of all three sides. This side, the inside of the the new panel and then the face which we've already cleaned and we've already actually put our weld through primer on. Yeah, and then that um, way we just connect all of the three yeah. or four layers and then or whatever. we just clamp it as tight as we can get it everywhere. Check our gap one last time. Start welding. Hell yeah. And then I gotta climb up <laughs> three steps on a step ladder. You know my real ladder? So now we, uh, we've got our stride marks. So these are our finished cut lines. We'll go ahead and cut those in, and then we will fit the panel one more time, and we'll get all of these fine-tuned with a file, uh, which is kind of tedious, but that's just part of the game. If you want your stuff to fit right, take your time. Definitely. File all of your root gaps, make sure everything fits perfect. Hell yeah. All right, so at this point now we just got to do a bunch of grinding and cleaning because you're not going to weld over paint. So now we'll, we'll clean this all up inside and out and uh, we'll be good. Uh, all right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this and obviously it doesn't fit underneath because um, it's actually the piece of metal that we cut off of the section that fits up here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this and we're obviously too long here. So we're gonna do some cutting and we're gonna actually shorten this sleeve so that it fits tight in the radius inside the panel. So it's gonna take a little bit of time, but I'm gonna sit here and work this out and then uh, we'll show you the finished product. All we did was cut the pinch welds off the top in the bottom of it um, and that allows it to slide right in place and as you can see that sleeve fits the contour of the original unicide perfectly. So from here all we got to do is our cleanup and our plug welds to secure the sleeve inside and then uh, yeah it's really not that bad it's easy to do so. Do you weld to the sleeve? Do you like plug weld the sleeve? So okay. what, what we plug, I'll plug it here here and back here. When I put that new panel on and this is here, right? 
when I lay the new panel over top of it, it's gonna hold that perfectly. It also adds structural rigidity to it. Um, if you ever get in an accident again, um, the, the panel, say I don't weld very well, which fortunately, not You'll gonna see. happen. He's gonna weld amazing. Uh, I've yeah, seen his it, welds. It's, it's kind of beautiful, honestly. I don't mean to, but I will. This is just gonna add a little added strength to it so that the new panel can't intrude into the cap, which it can anyway, because there's an inner reinforcement there. But. So this is where we're at. We're just making some cuts now, just getting things trimmed in, fitting real nice. All right, this is when I stop just rushing through this sleeve and I actually have to start thinking about what I'm doing before I screw up. So the problem I'm having right now is when I tuck this up behind the truck, mm -hmm. this angle is too aggressive. So it's actually pushing it, causing my sleeve to turn just a little bit. Uh, so what I wanna do is I wanna take the radius, reduce the radius here and make this straighter so the sleeve fits better inside the truck. It's gonna take three cuts. Well, hopefully I don't screw this up. We're about to find out. We're about to screw up. And don't worry, if I screw it up, Dan just has to buy another unit side. It's okay. Not a big deal. Either that or like I have to show bucks. my either that or I have to show my real skill set and actually form one by hand. Yeah, it gets our sleeve a lot straighter. He just like made some cuts and did some bendies and all of a sudden it was perfect. What the fuck? <laughs> it's not how many times you cut it, it's where you cut it. Measure 10, cut once. It's amazing what applying a little bit of force will do for you. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, I like to use needle nose. When I'm doing this, some guys like to use just a regular C clamp. But I like to use a needle, pair of needle nose because it'll reach up behind there. And your needle nose are on a V anyways. So it's not pinching the panel down here. It's only up here where we need it. That little bit is enough to make that seam fingernail tight. That's a good way to cheat. Though be real careful because you'll cut your thumb uh, on that sharp metal. But just make sure you're good and tight. Dude. It's the most important part of your sleeve and make it, is making sure that it's tight. So we're good there. I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning everything up. I'm gonna drill my holes for my plug welds, top and bottom. Put this thing together. Let's rotate this direction. So we're just trying to keep it off that side. We don't want to clean a bunch of metal off, just enough so that when we weld it, we're not sucking contaminants into it. Okay. I think I see that out. I mean, you know, oh man, I got something right here on my pants. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, hold on a sec. You, you got something on your arm. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of steps this man takes to do everything is so absurd. That's like the one thing I want to be able to take away from this video is the patience and the steps. He has removed these pieces probably 30 times. Like he's put them in, test fit them, readjusted them, put them back test fit them, drilled them, grounded them, put them back. I mean, it's just a huge process of it going over and over again to make sure it's got the perfect fit. And that's like something I've been really needing to take away. Yeah. Back to the cookie wheel again, and you don't want to remove it anywhere but except for where that spot weld's actually gonna go, or plug weld. All right, so anytime that you're doing a plug weld, you want to make sure you clamp on both sides of the plug weld. The tighter the metal is, the better the weld will be. Depending on how long the wire is coming out of your MIG welder, the further your MIG welder is away from the panel, the cooler the weld becomes. The closer you get to it, the hotter the weld comes. You're not supposed to adjust the temperature of your weld by moving your torch in and out. Your wire is supposed to be cut at 10 millimeters for welding steel. The cool part about a set of welding pliers is the distance between this surface and the cutters is exactly how long you need your wire coming from the nozzle. That is cool. 
That is cool. Yeah. That way you can start every weld at He's, the exact no, you said those distance. Are welding pliers? That weld. Look at him, he put on his welding jacket? P oh my god. PPE, brother. Jesus, dude. Personal protective equipment. I weld in motorcycle gloves and sleeveless t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I bet your arms have got the scars to prove they it. They do. They're, they're not that bad, yet, but I got that lily white skin. Most of those. Uh, uh, yet, uh, yet is the key yeah. word. Use your welding respirator once again. Miller makes them. Uh, that's your Miller part number right there. Make sure that you're using your your respirator when you're welding, y'all. Don't get, make yourself order the sick. Ones, though. But order the Lincoln brand. Yes. <laughs> What I personally like about this style respirator is it fits under my helmet with these. All right, I better put my welding on this too. All right, here he goes. So this is nice and convenient. Fits under the hood well. My new OSHA welding mask. First things first, double check your car, make sure that it's completely covered. You don't want to catch your car on fire. Got almost a perfect heat ring around Look it. Look at that ring. Uh, almost a perfect heat ring around it. There's not a big bubble sticking out the front side. Um, if you actually look at the back side of this weld, uh, the back side of it will look like the front side of the weld. Um, and that's what you're going for. And when you look at it, it actually looks like a plug weld from the front side. And when you get a truly good quality secure weld, true penetration, is that right there. The front and the back of the weld looks the same. But now we get to see how much trimming we have to do. Now we can just kind of fit everything back up on here and start the process all over again. Fit and trim, and fit and trim. Fit and trim, that sounds like my Instagram page. We, we know that we've established a good door gap. We're checking our pinch weld all the way around, making sure we don't have anything crazy going on with any of the inner structure. And then we're also taking a look, and now that we have our sleeves in, at our loop gap which is where we're welding the two panels together. The gap that's in between the two panels is a root gap. So now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna make some adjustments anywhere that it's overlapping so that I've got a nice even one to one and a half millimeter root gap all the way across it. How do you make your adjustment? So if I need gap, right, then I'm gonna take a file, um, if I'm gonna be really patient, um, and file it. Or I'll take that same cookie wheel uh, with either a 80 grit row lock or with the cookie wheel disc, and I just take and just trim the edge down, um, mark it, always mark so you don't forget, um, and then go around it and trim off where I need it trimmed. If I wind up, because it happens to every technician, I don't care how good you are, how long you've been doing it, the same thing that happens to the young guy in it that's doing it as a hobby happens to technicians like even myself. We'll get in a position where the, the unicide, the cat, uh, the quarter panel, whatever panel that we're welding on, gets hung up on something, you know, because we're, a lot of times when you're fitting the panel, you're overlapping it, which means that the, this panel won't fit perfect because you're overlapping it over top of the other one. Well, you make your cut, and then next thing you know, you're a little wide somewhere. Mm -hmm. Oh man, what do I do now? Well, it's not life and death. You can go back and actually fill that gap. You can have a root gap that's an inch wide. You can. I don't recommend it because mm. it makes it a whole lot more work in the end. But even if you have a space, you can go back through and so you have your backer, which is the panel, the sleeve. Yeah. And then you can weld this panel to the sleeve, right? Yeah. And then weld your new panel to your sleeve. And now you have metal to metal to metal, which is a solid welded connection right. between those three pieces of metal. So granite, is is that what you want? No, absolutely not. You want a 1.5 millimeter root gap so that when you weld to your sleeve, you're welding, you're striking the arc on the sleeve 
and then burning into the panels on both sides. Basically filling the gap with weld and, and connecting the bottom to the sides. Yeah, absolutely, that's yeah. the idea. Um, but if you do have a little miscut, it's not the end of the world. Can you show us how to fix that? Uh, I could, except for the fact that I'd have to cut He's this so off. perfect. And I just He's just so damn it. perfect, damn. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, I'm not trying to look to see how you do it. I'm trying to look to see how you fix it after I do it. <laughs> it just makes a final little fitment. And I'm going to clean it up, this side of it up, and I'm going to rip the welds into it, and that thing will be done. Just enough of a root gap to be able to get the welder. So, one little spot there I need to trim again. All right, last time it comes off. Ooh. Wow. I don't believe you. <laughs> I mean, that thing come off like... thing off 47,000 times. What do you mean? One, one more. more. That thing could be welded in place and be like, it's still got to come off one more time. <laughs> All right, got a good door gap. All the way around. Beautiful root gap here. That's a good gap. Beautiful root gap. It's a little wide here, but we're going to fill that with weld. No big deal. You'll never see it. Hold that in and hit that one. Real quick, can I use it? Do you need help? Yeah, absolutely. Right, right there. You're doing the body work. That looks oh, good. that's perfect. That looks perfect. That's perfect. All right, cool. Absolutely. Can you have one right here, though? One. We, we need one right there. How much of a. I mean, it was, oh, oh, God, that almost made me throw up. You thought I was going <laughs> to? <laughs> that almost made me too. All right, so now at this point, we're going to clamp everything in really tight. That way, we don't get any panel movement. And, uh, we're all set. Originally, I marked all of my original factory spot welds. And now when you look, you can see. Oh yeah, it does. It looks like. Everywhere there was a factory weld, we replaced that factory weld. Yeah. And that's what those Sharpie marks are for on the inside. That way when I go back through. You know. If I miss one, I can always take a drill, drill a hole in it, and not all the way through it, but through that first layer, and then go ahead and add a spot weld if I missed one. Let's keep welding. Go home today. All of my eyes are looking. It's on my left leg, anyways. Kind of excited me. You need to stop. That's why I am. Put it over here. I'll be the big boy. Do we have penetration? We have some penetration. That's what I'm talking about. Doctor penetration. Things are getting hot around here today. Feels nice and strong. I mean, I don't really know nothing about it, but. Oh, well, I'd be willing to put my career uh, that you could hit that again and it won't come apart. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> I can't just walk away. I just give away my tools and leave. Mm -hmm. Wait, hold on now. Gimme, give gimme. Give the only thing that could have gone wrong in the welding process is panel movement. There's a clip on it still. That's why we use clips. Oh, because you can do it? You can close it with clips? Damn. Oh, damn, we got a double cap. That's a nice damn door. That's you. This, no, it's you. No, you, it's you. you. Work. What'd you no. do? All right, this is my buddy Mike. You guys know Mike by now. It's been like probably like a 50 minute video with him by now uh, because of how awesome he is. That's what we're going. Well, thank you. I uh, appreciate you. What he's basically done is completely sever this piece, clean it out, and weld it back in place. Now, there are a few more steps you got to do that will take place off camera just, just for convenience sake for Mike and, and everybody else. But 
Uh, now the process is to what? Grind these smooth and then... Yep, absolutely. So we're gonna take it from here and these are cleaned raw welds. So they're not super pretty looking at this point. As you can see, they're stacked, stitched together the way they're supposed to be, plug welded just the way they're supposed to be. And so from here, we'll take the grinder and we'll finish all the welds off nice and neat, almost metal finishing the panel. And then from there, we'll take a little bit of well, most people would call it Bondo. Um, I call it filler. This one, um, yeah, Bondo's a brand. Yes, uh, and uh, body fillers are made by all different companies. So uh, from this point, we're gonna grind it, fill it, and it's done, it's ready for primer and paint. Hell yeah, man, I'm so excited. I learned so much doing this today with you. Well, the, actually two days, it was just, when you came to me, he was like, this is dead ass gonna be a two day job. And I was like, bet, and it was. It was, two, it was two day job for you. Yeah. But uh, you killed it. You did such a good job on it. Thank you so Thanks. much, man. Hey, no problem. And make sure you guys follow this guy too. It's uh, Mike, or no, it's, it's Magnum Mike One. Magnum period Mike One. Uh, link for his Instagram will be in the description. He is this your first time starting Instagram? Yeah. This is first Instagram. He's gonna be so be nice to him. Don't be mean to him. He'll be shitty. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be posting all sorts of repairs and stuff, right? Like Absolutely. All, like, the yeah. crazy because anybody can replace bolts, right? Anybody can be like mechanical. Anybody can replace bolts. Uh, this stuff is an artwork. This is an art form. Absolutely. And it takes a lot of practice. So when you're uh, when you start out and you're striking your first welds. And you're looking at this going, wow, that's not all that pretty. When you strike your first weld, you're going to go, oh my God, he's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, y'all, I, I recommend uh, if you've got some heavy structural repair, probably a good idea to take it to a shop. Feel like you can tackle it on your own, go for it. Worst thing you can do is mess it up. And then you got to bring it to me and I'll fix it. Yeah. He can fix anything. So, worst case scenario, man, you just mess something up, bring it to somewhere, and they'll fix it. Absolutely. Right. Magnum collision, guys. Uh, but thank you guys for watching this episode of the Dually Repair. That's basically it. This thing will be ready to go back on the road. Yeah. So thank you guys for, for following along. Thank you guys for waiting. I know this thing has been a long time coming, but it's going to be well worth the wait. And especially since I got people like Mike working on this thing with me. Yeah. I appreciate it. It's going to be you, amazing, man. brother. Thank right. you, guys. Thanks, brother.